Father, we give you all the glory and the praise for this anointing of the Holy Ghost, this glory of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for it. We praise you, Lord. Now, I want to I wanna zoom in on this, how the blood of Jesus and how the cross of Jesus paid for you to live financially blessed, financially wealthy. The blood of Jesus has given a transference of wealth, wisdom, wealth, grace has been translated through the blood. So the blood of Jesus has given you an impartation of money anointed. The blood of Jesus has given you access to fresh provisional testimonies. The angels of prosperity and money and wealth they all were gathered to see Jesus win the victory at the cross. They all saw the finale. They all saw the evidence that financial devils would not have any more rights to torment a child of God and their substance. When that blood of Jesus was shed, even from his hands, that blood of Jesus gave you all authority back to sow, to reap, to have all of your inheritance at work in your life for your rest of your days. The blessing of Abraham is talked about in Galatians chapter 3. It said that the blessing of Abraham might come upon you and the promise of the Spirit. Well, you notice it talked about the blessing of Abraham first. God was eager to restore the blessing above all things. Because in Galatians 3.13, it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse. So that was the major focus of Christ. The blood was an escape from the curse. Now, saints, we hardly talk about this, but let's go there. Let's go to, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. We always talk about the blessing, but I'm going to shock you. Look at verse 15. It says, but it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, it says that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. It says, curse shall thou be in the city. We got to see what Christ redeemed you from. Now, saints, Remember I said something powerful that people are not the same in their city? That they often try to trick their man of God when they live in their city, they do other stuff. They live a different way. Well, look what it says right here. Cursed shall thou be in thy city. So it says that means that satanic activity will govern you while you're in your city. This deep, boy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And cursed shall thou be in the field. This a non-sower. This not only a non-sower, this a person that's sowing incorrectly. So they may sow, but they sow into the wrong person. It said, cursed shall you be in the field. So that means that God not receiving the seed just like Cain. So either they not sowing at all or they sowing in the wrong person. And God not accepting it. He not bypassing it. Cursed shall thou be in the field. All right, let's go here, verse 17. Cursed shall thou be thy basket in thy store. 
Your basket going to be cursed. Your store going to be cursed. Now look what it said, verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Uh-oh. Talking about your children being cursed, your health being cursed. The fruit of thy land shall be cursed. The increase of thy, thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep, your provision going to be cursed. Look at verse 19. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every song, stronghold, sickness and poverty, but cease. But what if we change the song? We're cursed in the city. We're cursed in the field. Watch. You see how your heart dropped? You see that? Huh? How, how, how many of y'all just felt that heavy blanket hit? We're cursed when we come and when we go. <laughs> we, we cast down every blessing. Health and riches will cease. For the blood of Jesus is defeated. And we are cursed. See, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, how, look, 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 look. Now, see, nobody would sing that. But see, I got authority. I got authority over devils, right? So I, I'm not worried about them. See, I can say that. I'm not scared of them. They underneath my feet. I'm doing a demonstration. You see how you see how your soul just went left when you when you heard that. You see how wicked it sound. You see how crooked and eerie it sound. Don't it make you feel strange, huh? But this is what God said going to happen if you don't hearken unto his voice diligently. If you don't observe to do all his commandments. Now, some, somebody will say, you know, this is the Old Testament, the New Testament. It don't matter. Okay, so the commandments. Hearken to the commandments. Okay, let's go over here to John 15. And somebody will be like, that's Old Testament. God not into that commandments, commandments stuff no longer. That commandments stuff was Old Testament. That don't apply to us today. All right. Mr. Stupid. We're going to take you over here to John 14, 15. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So commandments is a New Testament thing. Okay, so let's hop back all the way back over here. He said, verse 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all that he, that he of his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. These curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right, let's go further into the curse. You got to see what Jesus redeemed you from. Verse 19, Cursed shall thou be when thou come in and when thou go out. Watch this here, verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. We don't never read this, babies. Huh? We don't never read this. But the Spirit of God, he, he going to quicken you tonight. There's an apostolic wealth transference that you're going to walk in. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation. You know what vexation means? You ever hear them older people say they vex my spirit? Vexation mean that you extremely annoyed, irritated, bothered. You extremely upset, angry. It means that your peace is completely quenched. That means that you're uncomfortable. That means you don't feel good. That means that there's no peace. Look at this. And rebuke. The Lord shall send rebuke. That means that he sent disapproval. In all that thou settest thy hand unto for to do. Until thou be destroyed. And until thou perish quickly. Because of the wickedness of thy doing. Whereby thou hast forsaken me. 
Uh oh. Let me just stay to my office. Whereby thou hast forsaken me. Let's go to verse 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee. Until he have consumed thee from off the land. Whither thou goest to possess it. Let's go to verse 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption. And with a fever. <laughs> and with an inflammation. <laughs> and with an extreme burning. What in the NBA young boy is this? <laughs> and with an extreme burning and with the sword. And with blasting. And with mildew. And they shall pursue thee until thy perish. Let's go further. Verse 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Do you know what this means? That the earth is iron to you. You know, iron is very hard, tough. And if anybody pitch you in iron, you'll suffer. So if the earth is iron, it's saying you're going to have suffering, bad experiences, hell or earth. Now look at this here. See, ain't nobody want to shout. You see, you see how when we tell the truth, ain't nobody want to shout. Nobody shouting. <laughs> I ain't seen no one person say hallelujah yet. <laughs> You see how the truth you see how the truth take away praises from God? You see how truth? When it said that the heavens shall be brass, that's opposite to silver and gold. Brass means that you're not gonna have provisional authority. You're not gonna have provisional blessing from God. He not gonna make it rain. Glenn, thank you, son. You're the only one that say hallelujah on here. Now people ain't say, <laughs> now people ain't say hallelujah on here. You're the only one. Now look at this here. <laughs> so watch this. Money come if it's not on you. Because it's brass. It's not silver and gold. All right. So that represent famine. That represent issues. <laughs> All right, let's go to 24. And the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. Oh, let's read this slowly, people of God. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. What God's saying, even the residue. See, I feel the power of God going through me as I'm talking about this. As I stand before God, this ain't no fear. The power of the Holy Ghost going through my arm as I'm talking about this. Because he's giving me a signal, go forth. He's saying, preach my word. I, I need them to hear this. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. That means that the Lord himself is doing this because you don't obey his voice. Now, saints, I, I want you to catch this. This the Lord doing it. So, so understand when we say the fear of God, that's what it means. You don't play with him because he, he, he got a clap back. He, don't let people fool you. Okay, let's keep on reading. Verse 24. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. All right, let's go to 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Now watch this here. I, your enemies sometimes is even debt collectors, bill collectors. Your enemy is sometimes government, different type of stuff. Even at your workplace. 
somebody might lie to you to a boss. You might they, they might successfully not they fire you on purpose and, and, and different type of stuff. It said the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. That means that they're going to win against you. People that oppose you are going to successfully be able to win. That means shut you down. Thou shalt go out one way against them. That means that you go to the fight. And flee seven ways before them. Uh-oh. That means that you can't find victory. So you got to retreat. You don't got the power. You don't got a defense. Now watch this here. Remember the words say that money is a defense. So one of the reasons why you got to retreat is because you ain't got no money. You don't want to talk to me. Okay. All right. I, 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 I keep on. It says, thou shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And you shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Watch this here. You shall be removed into all the kingdoms. Okay, let's slow this down so I can explain it through the teaching anointing. You shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. You know what that means? Remove means to displace from an area. Remove means that you, you're going to be removed from favor, the kingdom of God, God's will, God's plan for your life, God's goodness. You're going to be removed to, from that into all the kingdom, kingdoms of the earth. So you're going to have to be a slave in Babylon. God going to revoke the favor. So you're going to have to serve in Babylon. You're going to have to be subject to Babylon. You're going to have to make only fans. Oh, you don't. You, <laughs> oh, I done, I, done, I done stepped on some toes. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You're going to have to be selling Tun Tun water. Not even miracle water. <laughs> Let me keep on going. Let me let somebody hold my mule. Let me, <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Let, me let me go verse 26. And thy carcass. Sh now now let's let's hop back there. You shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. So even you you might have to be in the porn kingdom. You might have to be in the prostitution kingdom. You might have to be in the drug selling kingdom. You might have to be in the greed kingdom, the kingdom of trickery, deceitfulness. You'll have to be in the kingdom of lust. You'll have to be in the kingdom of blasphemy, the kingdom of dishonor. You'll have to be in the kingdoms of the earth. So you're going to have to adapt to the world and the God of this world and follow Satan's system that he, Satan has provided for people that don't love God, honor God, obey God. You're going to be subject to that. This to curse. All right, look what it says. Thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. That means that even animals not going to respect you. You might get bit by a dog. <laughs> a lion might turn on you. You, you don't know what's going on. Even the animals don't got, even the animals don't respect you. Even the animals know that there's no hedge on your life. Even the animal says this deep, this deep. Verse 26 is saying that even animals know that God does not approve of you. You might be walking in a Rottweiler, walking with its owner. It might loose and just bite you up. Because even the animal know that you're a rebel. Animals going to have a prophetic anointing to know that you disobey God's voice. 
Now, why should you say it said the birds? Now, the birds is scary because we see that in Revelation as well. It said that the birds was going to be eating people's flesh. So even birds going to know that you are heathen. Saints, we don't often talk about it, but there have been a lot of uh, scary encounters that even physical people have experienced where birds went and bit them. Or birds followed them or haunted them in dreams. There's a fallen angel. There are some fallen angels that look like birds. There are some fallen angels that fly by the night. There are some fallen angels that operate as bats. They operate as dark eagles. There are some satanic agents that have wings to fly. They operate from the second heaven. They govern heaven and earth on the lives of people that don't receive the government of God. Dark birds. Look at verse 27. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt. And with the emeralds. And with the scab. And with the itch. Whereof thou cannot be healed. You're not talking to me in here. When you curse God. God start even touching the body. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt. And with the emeralds. And with the scab. And with the itch. Which thou cannot be healed. Look at verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. And blindness. And astonishment of heart. Y'all don't understand what this means. Let me break it down through the teaching anointing. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. That means insanity. You're going to be a lunatic. And you ain't going to even recognize how lunatic you look. But somebody with wisdom, a prophetic anointing, a fear of God will look at you and say, what is this? But in your mind, you'll be, you'll be bold as day. But you'll be pinning on an act of ludicrousy. It said the Lord shall smite thee with madness. Madness means that you are an insane individual. You're crazy. And you'll have a mentality that you're proving a point. But really, people will look at you and say, this is so pointless. What is going on here? Watch this. The Lord shall smite thee with blindness. Watch this, saints. This is what Thessalonians was talking about when they said God sent them a strong delusion to believe a lie because they believe not the truth. God shall strike thee with blindness, smite thee with blindness. That means that he won't even let you see who he is. He won't even give you a chance to repent. He won't even look at you and be like, you know, I won't convince you that you're wrong, he'll just let you believe what you believe. Since that you're so strong-willed to believe it, he'll let you believe it. He'll smite you with blindness. That means that what you think is right, he gonna position in your soul that is right so that you can't even turn from it. Because he already set your day. You going to hell. <laughs> yeah, We're we, we gonna talk in hell. An astonishment of heart. This means that your heart is in confusion. Saints, I, I'm teaching you through the teaching anointing. I'm teaching you through the teaching anointing, so I'm bringing this word alive to you in a way that is peculiar. Only the Holy Ghost could do it. Astonishment of heart means confusion. The word astonishment is really a word that expresses awe or confusion. So if somebody said, I must remember the word said that they was astonished at Jesus's teaching. That means they were shocked. They was confused. 
So astonishment of heart mean that you're going to be in confusion and you're also going to be shocked at what is happening to you. you let, you let, you're going to be like, how do I come to this? How is this happening to me? You're going to be like, how did I get to this point? In your mind, you're going to have astonishment of heart. When you ponder, like you not, you may not let people see, but you will look at yourself and say, how did I do this? Say this, become this. How am I in this position? It said, the Lord shall smite thee, not the devil. Because what verse 15 say? You didn't hearken diligently to my voice. You didn't care about what I said. So this is this, this my response. In life, you could choose your choices, but you can't choose God's response. But you got to know what you've been redeemed from in the curse if you choose to obey God's voice. So I'm showing you. Let's go to verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday. And the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. That means if you got a certain schedule, you got certain things set up in your life, those things are going to break down on you. If your life has been set up a certain way, you got a certain schedule, and this is how you operate, that operation is going to get quenched by God. Your life going to be at a standstill. That means that if you got access, you might take flight, you might go places, you might do things, you might go places. God going to find a way to stop you. You're not going to prosper in your ways. The things that you like to do somehow is going to be affected. And it's going to be God doing it, so it's nothing that you're going to do to be able to stop it. It's not like you can group up with 15 people and be like, hey, protect me. Because God is the one doing it and God is invisible. It's not flesh and blood. This apostolic. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Watch this. And thou shalt not prosper in your ways, and thou shalt only be oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. That's why I've, I've, I've taught you all for years. I don't understand how people defy against God. Because if God don't cause people to help you, ain't nothing going to happen for you. You got to be a plumb fool to not listen to God in, in the Holy Ghost. His way. Because... At the end of the day, it is the Holy Ghost that even calls people to be nice to you. Look what the words say. No man shall save you. You're going to be oppressed. That means ain't nobody going to feel compassion for you. You want to tell people your story and people going to be like, ah, well, that's life. Get over it. All right. It's better to show compassion to God and let him have your attentiveness and obey him. It's way better. Now look what it says right here. Let's go to verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, that means marry a wife, and another man shall sleep with her. Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Let's go to verse 31. Let's go to verse 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. Thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. Don't leave me, girl. <laughs> Gina, 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 Gina. Oh! Thine ass shall be violently taken away from thee before thy face, 
and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies. And thou shalt not, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto other people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long. And there shall not be no might in your hand. The fruit of thy hand and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat it up. And thou shalt not be only oppressed. Thou shalt only be oppressed and crush always. So thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. That means that you're going to go crazy. Remember I talked about health. Let's go to verse 35. And the Lord shall smite thee in the knees. You need them knees, baby. And in the legs, some of y'all knees crackling now like popcorn. <laughs> some of y'all knees pop more. Some of y'all knees pop more than July 4th. <laughs> some of y'all knees crack more than a gunshot or a back shot in Chicago. <laughs> We're going to have to edit that last joke out. That, I said, I got to edit that one out. I'm going to write Facebook, ask them if they can edit that out for me. That last one, I, I got to edit that joke out. That, that. <laughs> Saints, the, the, the highest level of temptations I ever had when, was when I stayed in the hotels. When I stayed in the hotels, that was the highest level of temptations I ever had in my life. Hoshiati, Hoshiataya, Tononishiana, Tononishiana, Tononishiana. And you go lay down, go lay down, you wake up. Tononishiana, 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 Tono. Tononishiana, Tononishiana, Tononishiana. <laughs> One time I woke up. One time I woke up, I thought they were really shooting. I, 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 I knew I knew I knew my season was going to come one of them days then I was all, all I had was my imagination of course that's all I had that's all I had was my imagination of course Since you wake up the next day, you hear Hononishiana, Hononishiana, and you just hear noises in your head. And since one time, I'll never forget one time, it was a Muslim couple had came right next to the door. And, and since you could walk and look through the side window and like see, and. and <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to talk about it. But I, I, I've been strong. I've been strong. All that I done heard, see. And they, 
I, I'm gonna tell you something. My daughter's in there is so funny because I be teaching her the Bible and she can't help it. She'll bust out laughing <laughs> and she'll be laughing for like two minutes, can't stop. Sometimes I'm talking to my daughter about stuff and she'll bust out laughing and can't stop laughing. And she really laughing from the belly. You know how people fake laugh and stuff like that? But she busts out laughing. <laughs> and, and it helped her learn so much better. And she'll bust out laughing for like two minutes and she can't help it. And she'll try to stop and she can't stop. <laughs> this, this verse 35 is funny though. Because it said the Lord shall smite. The Lord shall smite thee in the, <laughs> the Lord shall smite thee in the knees. <laughs> now what? Why the Lord? <laughs> why the Lord went to the knees first? Them knees was somewhere. Them knees was doing some things. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs. <laughs> See, he went straight to the legs. Them legs obviously was violating God. Watch this here. With a sore botch. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. This so <laughs> this so botch is funny. With a sore <laughs> with a sore botch that <laughs> God went go smoke. <laughs> He went gonna smite the knees and the legs with a sore <laughs> with a sore botch that cannot be healed. Now watch this. From the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Now let's go to verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou hast set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And fathers meaning Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The bless, the blessing. And it says, and there shall, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Okay, let's go further on this. Let's go to verse 38. It says, thou shalt carry much seed out into the field. Saints, let me tell you how powerful I am, right? <laughs> now, let me, let me just tell you this. Did you know I did a broadcast yesterday, I believe, where I was talking about how God is so amused with pleasure that he even pit uh, sex even in the animalistic realm. Saints, did you know that after I did that video, I walked outside and I saw two squirrels. I videotaped it. It's like squirrel porn. Two squirrels were sexually entangled with each other and one was trying to get the other to sleep with it and w the male started trying to get the female to do something real wild that I'm not at liberty to talk about. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, dang, me and this squirrel, we must be cousins. <laughs> Dad, this squirrel, maybe this my long lost son. Maybe, maybe, maybe the son I'm supposed to have is in the squirrel community. 
Maybe that's why I ain't see a physical sun yet. Maybe the sun, maybe this my sun right here. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and thou shalt gather but little in. For the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt carry much seed out in the field and shall gather but little in. For the locust shall consume it. That means that demons have power over your harvest. When you don't obey God's voice, Demons have power over your harvest. This powerful saints. This is real powerful. Demons have power over your harvest. They control your income lifestyle. When you don't obey God's voice, the locusts, will control what gets to you. So you might see other people and say, why not me? I need that. But demons don't respect what you need. Demons respect when you obey. Wow. So saints, I just gave you a whole rundown about the curses, which is very powerful. And, and see, it said Christ has redeemed you from the curse. Now, when Christ redeemed you for the curse, that means that he bought you so that you could obey his voice. Now, the minute that you don't want to obey his voice, you go right back into this. This is now the portal that you live out of. Remember, he redeems you so that you can now be owned by his voice. But when you, look what it said, and it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto my voice to observe all that I command you, that these curses will come upon thee. So God saying, I'm taking you out so that you could do what I say. If you don't want to do what I say, you go right back in. And that brings us back to this text where it said that thou shalt be removed in verse 25. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 25. Thou shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. That means that you're being removed. And now you're stuck inside of satanic kingdoms. The kingdom of lust, the kingdom of wrong relationships, the kingdom of... Uh, Bastard children. Verse 41 says, Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them. Now watch this. It says, Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them. Look at the last part. For they shall go into captivity. 
Now this is all the curse. So saints, now you understand the blood of Jesus took you out of these verdicts. You don't want to miss nothing I've said in this broadcast. You should play this back innumerable times. There's glory in the revelation that I've given you on this line. The way that you carry glory is by repetition of listening and hearing. Glory carriers revisit divine teaching. So saints, I want you to catch this. Money cometh is the blessing of Abraham being revealed as a reward for your redemption. Money cometh is the father giving you an encounter with his pure heart. Money cometh is God giving you an encounter with his pure heart. Money cometh is the Lord showing you the life of pleasure that sin has attempted to keep you far away from. See, the financial anointing of the Holy Ghost, it is found in sanctification. It's what God told Abram to leave his father's house. And that's why even um, Solomon had to separate from David for a moment to start sowing on his altar. Meaning he couldn't lean over to David and David sacrificed he started sowing. You notice he couldn't he couldn't lean on his dad altar. He had to sow himself. The financial anointing is found in the sanctification process because the spirit of God going to need you to not allow what he's doing inside of your soul to be tampered with by traditional people that don't have any results of what you're going to have. If God going to bring you into multimillionaire status, he also going to bring a multimillionaire to you for you to treat them right. He, he going to test you with a millionaire in your face. See, wherever you going, God going to bring that to you to see how you talk to it, how you handle it, how you obey it, how you deal with it. Saints, I told you the story where Dr. Mike Murdoch gave me $40,000. Was that $20,000? I think, yeah, it was about $20,000 in a briefcase and gave me an assignment with a briefcase, trusting me with cash. And I had that briefcase in my hand, all that money inside that briefcase. Boy, you know what I said? This ain't just by coincidence. I'm seeing how I'm a flow. That was like the Minister of Finance is giving me a briefcase. When, when, when I see that, I said, ah, 
This ain't just an assignment that he's sending me on. This is spiritual transference right here. What I'm dealing with right here, the father is getting this physical body used to dealing with that. If you going to get to millionaire status, God going to send a millionaire to you and see how you deal with them. God told Abraham, I'll bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. What God was saying, if people curse you out, that's how I'm going to respond to them. If they bless you and treat you good, that's how I'm going to respond to them. My daughter, Suzanne, getting miracles right now. My daughter, Suzanne, all the way in the UK, right? Uh, where you at, Suzanne? You're not even in America. You you overseas. You overseas. Is it England? or I, I'm probably off. It's somewhere overseas. We, we, what's your location again? I can't believe I done forgot. You you stay over, you don't stay in America. You stay over there overseas somewhere. Where you stay at, Suzanne? Suzanne been following me for years too. These some of my secret weapons because they, they 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 radical. If I go live at 5 a.m., you're going to see Suzanne. It don't matter if Suzanne don't got no eyebrows on, wherever she at. The UK. Yeah, UK. It don't matter if Suzanne, if she done cut off her ear, she done Mike Tyson, one of her ears, she, she going to be watching me all the way over there. And saints, Suzanne will attest to you how through connection, she moving in a money coming to London. She underneath a money portal all the way in, in London. What? And guess what? Do you know Suzanne never met me in the physical? Suzanne never got to come to one of my conference yet, but she will be. But for years, been serving me and never, got, ne never, never met me personally. These are a lot of people that stay in the blessing mode. And the blessing is overtaking them. Susan has been faithful for years. Don't worry. I study Suzanne too. I study everybody. <laughs> so so, so I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not guessing. And Saints, do you know that she underneath a money portal? I was talking about my Alicia earlier, but Suzanne is under their money portal. Money coming to her. Saints, do you know Carrie has a hairdresser? Her, the person that does her hair, gave her money. You know how you do you know how you pay a hairdresser to do your hair? The hairdresser sent her money and she showed it to me. Her hair, will you hear a hairdresser paying the person? You know hairdressers money hungry. The seed is powerful. God going to send you a millionaire and see how you treat them. How you treat a millionaire is whether or not you get to millionaire status. He going to do that with everybody. Don't, 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 don't think, don't, think, don't, don't. Don't get it twisted now. Don't get it twisted, baby. Wherever you going to, he going to send it to you in a body. Uh-oh. Wherever you going to, he going to send it to you in a body. Uh-oh. Wherever you going to, he going to send it to you in a body and see how you deal with it. Millionaire status is easy for God. It's actually one of his lowest. It's not even 1% of his financial ability. Somebody need to write that down. Millionaire status is not even 1% of God's financial ability. Uh-oh. So, could you write that down? Millionaire status is not even 1% of God's financial ability. God's financial ability 1% of it is not even multi-millionaire status.
millionaire status or multi-millionaire status. That's not even 1%. Billionaire status is not even 1% of God's financial grace. It's not 1%. It's not even half a percent. It's not even a decimal. The Lord will flex in your life. If you stop letting your flesh flex. That's hot, right? That's hot, right? God will flex in your life if you stop letting your flesh flex. Don't let your flesh show out and God will. Money cometh to me now. Don't let your flesh show out and God will. The Holy Ghost power been looking for somebody to give harvests to. Looking for somebody to give the financial grace and ability of himself to. Saints for prosperity angels, money cometh angels, wealth angels. It's funny to them because they've been watching God make people rich from way back when. They done seen how God brought out the children of Israel with their silver and gold. Them angels done saw when Abraham came out very rich. They done saw wealth transferences happening for Solomon. They done saw the blessing overtake Jeremiah. They saw the blessing overtake Joseph. They saw the blessing overtake Malachi. They saw the blessing overtake Isaac. They saw the blessing overtake Jacob. They saw the blessing overtake Esther, Mary, Mary Magdalene. They saw the blessing overtake the people of God, the certain woman. They saw the blessing overtake the disciples, the apostles. They saw the blessed overtake the church in Acts chapter 4. Money cometh to me now. The Holy Ghost is all powerful. I want to tell you something that happened when you're a sower too. When you're driving on the road, you'll see a money truck. Don't think that that's just you. When you are, when you honoring God, when God placing that financial anointing on you, when you driving on the road, you could be inside of a bus. You could be driving with somebody. You'll be inside your own vehicle. You'll see a money truck. Because the, the father's showing you, I rule the financial systems. Saints, I can't tell you how many times I'll drive up to a place or I'm driving and a money truck right in front. And I know what I mean. God will show you my money cometh world is on the path I got you on. Hold fast. Hold strong. Mare così calandansia. Vene grevisa la cananzio. Grepe sono pa grande vien. Venze li groreze lambienos. Anda la galeonzo clonovien. Ken ne grevezo cromusti enzo. Zele cronisian. Galene crovisies. See, money cometh is the law of attraction. Money cometh is the law of attraction. When you declare money cometh, all of God's ability starts working toward you. All of God's financial favor starts surrounding you as with a shield. That decree is angelic activation every time. Money cometh to me now. You telling God you are the ruler of the silver and gold. Money cometh to me now. You saying, Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh. There's always a ram in the bush. You supply all my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You got your own riches. I'm not waiting on no Bitcoin. I'm not waiting on, 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 on no cryptocurrency. I got a currency in Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, though he was rich, 
he became poor. You know that grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the scriptures say. That though he was rich, he became poor. That through his poverty, you might be made rich. This all the graciousness of God. Riches is the graciousness of God. If you're taking notes, write that down. Riches is the graciousness of God. Riches is the graciousness of God. It's his grace overflowing. Now, see the spirit of God telling me something right here. The spirit of God telling me something right here. Male crovenzo li calini gianzo. A gerezo lo crivi e jono pranazien. Praligio no greni gaganzo lo vienzo. A delegre veze aterio. A legre risa la genensias. Peri vala gelisianse. No la crivi genagon. Garani e croroci ligis. Fezolo gre resilien. Ay, 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 ay. Mare croriza laes. Gele crovenzo lo cuvienos. Celizo lo veclenien. I decree, I receive multimillionaire status in my life from the Lord. I decree in the name of Jesus, I am living debt free by the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of the Lord. I decree in the name of Jesus that I receive the blessing of Abraham and all of its benefits. I receive Psalm 103. It says, do not forget the Lord and his benefits. I choose not to forget the Lord and his benefits. I receive God daily loading me with benefits right now. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. Look at this realm of sowing. There's a realm of sowing called the sacrifices. You need to know this. There is a department that God has singled out for specific sowers that are sowing out of sacrifices. That means that your life is currently still small. You don't have all the things that other people have. Or simply you have chosen to impress God in your giving. You have chosen to show him your trust in a very intense mannerism. Let's go here. It said the fire God came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. There is a department of sowing called the sacrifices where God knows who on earth is sacrificing in their sowing. The Lord know that it killed your flesh to sow that seed. The Lord know that you pit him above something that you wanted and he documents the sacrifices. That department, he explode that department with finances. I know I've been there. You gonna tell me I don't know you? You think that I'm just making this stuff up? I started from the bottom. Now I'm here. And saints, I remember when I met Dr. Maimera. Dr. Maimera was a multimillionaire. He's still a multimillionaire. He told me, if you ask me for anything, I'll, I'll help you. I'll give it to you. I never asked him for nothing. That just show you my mindset. Because I, whoops, financial demons. <laughs> Glory to God. I whooped financial demons. You know what I did? You know what I did? I didn't let no financial demons hold me down. You know what I did? I took authority. I took the power of God and I moved with the seed, 
with the time and with the harvest, the seed, the time, the harvest. I didn't say, hey, Dr. Mike Murdoch, uh, I want to get into man that stash real quick. Can I buy about two G's up off of you? I'll pay it back soon. No, I ain't do none of that. What I did was I took the word of God and worked it. I picked the seed in the ground. I waited on the time and I got the harvest. Glory to money cometh to me now. I tried it. Even when I had the multimillionaire right in my presence, I said, I'm just going to work the system. Today, I'm still working the system. Hallelujah. Either Dr. Mike Murray, I was going to give me a paycheck or I was going to work the system. You know what I did? I went to go work the system. I picked my seed in the ground. Saints, don't get it twisted. I ain't rebel against his ministry. I just took the anointing that he had and reproduced. What? Shh. Shh. You're like, why are you not a part of the staff, Prophet Joshua? Why are you not a part of the staff? Because I took the staff that was in his hand. All I did was take the staff that he was holding on to and move with those angels that he had around him. I decree the blessing over you in the name of Jesus. I decree over you, my partners. I speak multiplication. Father, I said what you told me to say, long-winded. Holy Ghost, you spoke your word. We give you praise for the miracle money, the miracle finances, the miracle favor that you are dispersing in intensity. Thank you for increasing. Every one of my partners, more and more, I decree right now over you in the authority of my office, money multiply in your life now. Money thou art loose in your life right now. Money favor I be upon you now in the name of Jesus. I speak money cometh on you right now, right now, right now. Canoso clovianja. May the financial and prosperity anointing of the Lord sit on you from this day forth and forevermore. That's what I said. 